Hello all, once again welcome to Fizzy Dive and this is your teacher Alexi Rajan. So here today we are going to study a very important topic for class 11 standard that is what are the graphs that we are going to see in this particular chapter that is we are going to study about two main graphs that is displacement time graph as well as the velocity time graph. So without wasting time we are just diving straight to the class so to the class. So mainly in this chapter we had seen what are the different aspects in movement in a motion in a straight line and we have seen that if I'm calculating if I'm just saying that there is a straight line and there is a man standing here and if he is traveling he will have certain values that is definitely that man will exhibit certain displacement there okay so he will just start from here this point a and this is point b so he will start from a to b and there is a displacement s and he took t time so definitely there will be a time for the man to move from point a to b and then the next thing is that the man should have certain velocity it can be uniform velocity it can be non-uniform velocity according to the time interval how much displacement he's traveling we'll calculate whether it is a uniform or non-uniform velocity so those who don't have, know what is uniform and non-uniform velocity i will just pin some uh, here so that you can go to that particular video and see and then get a con correct concept on uniform and non-uniform velocity and definitely if the velocity is changing then definitely the man will have one more very important attribute that is the acceleration we will study acceleration in details in this particular chapter in this particular session so let us wait and this is a scenario so in this chapter we are going to study about two types of graph the first one is displacement time graph and the second one is velocity time graph so we will see what is this uh, displacement time graph and velocity time graph. From the name itself, we will understand what is the actual physics or meaning behind this particular graph. So if I have certain values, for say, we'll see and we'll take one example here. Just imagine that the person which we had shown just now, that is he is having a time period t and he is executing a movement. That is I'm just taking uh, x. That, uh, that means that he is moving in the x-axis, okay, displacement, simply s only, but I'm just for precisely, I'm just taking x, okay, value. In the first time interval of two seconds, uh, two minutes, he is just exhibiting two meters, okay, fine. Then in the next two seconds, he is exhibiting six meters or, okay, four meters. Next two seconds, he is ex executing that is 6 meters. Okay, just imagine that this is a data in your hand. That is, one man is there and he is walking. Okay, he is walking from point A to B. In the first two seconds, he had just reached this particular point and uh, this is, this is the origin. So, this is, this is the origin from, he is starting from this particular point O and then he is moving and he had reached to this particular point B. Okay, just imagine this is point B and this point B is how much distance 2 meters away from this particular origin okay the next two seconds he had reached point C and this point is how much distance far away from the origin 4 meters far away from the origin and the next two seconds you can see that this particular man had reached let this be point okay I'll just take another point that is let this be point D and this D is how much distance from the origin? It is 6 meters. That is here in the data, 6 meters from the origin. This is a scenario. Okay. So you can see with respect to the origin, the first two seconds he had traveled 2, then he had traveled 4, then he had traveled 6. From here, we are going to plot a graph between what and what? Between displacement and time. And we call it as what? Displacement time graph. For example, if I am plotting a graph that is x-axis I am taking as time and the y-axis I am taking it as displacement. If I am just saying this is the origin and I am starting that origin with 0, then let this be 2, 4, 6, 8. I am taking an interval of 2 minutes or 2 seconds. It's up to you. Okay. And then 10 like that. And x-axis there will be an arrow mark, y-axis there will be an arrow mark. Okay. Here also I am just taking according to the values I will just uh, divide my interval according to my convenience. Okay. So I will not take how to divide and all because it's already studied there. Okay. Fine. Let this be 0 and let this be 2, 4, 6, 
8 like that. Okay. Now I'm just going to plot a graph here. Okay. In the first two seconds, the displacement is 2 meters. That is, in two seconds, you got a point here, right? And according to the graph, the next two seconds, at the next two seconds, you can see it is 4 meters. So the point comes somewhere here, right? And here, the next two seconds, according to the data, you are given that the man has traveled 6 meters. So definitely here, the next two seconds means 6 seconds. Okay, here, this is a point. And now you are plotted. According, you are given with certain data, raw data, and then you are asked to plot a graph, and you had plot a graph, and you can see that according to the graph, you got these points. Okay, these are the points. Okay, this is one point, second point, third point. Now, just draw or connect it. Now you got a graph. Now you got a graph. This is the thing, right? Okay, so this is how you are plotting a graph with respect to displacement and time. Okay, you are given with displacement time, you are plotting a graph and you got a displacement time graph. And here I took this particular scenario by using this man. This man is moving from this point to this point and you got a graph. And we will study in details how and what all things you are getting out of this particular graph. Okay, so let us move specifically to displacement time graph. Yes. Listen, so these are certain data given to you in your hands and, and you are asked to find out or plot a graph between displacement and time or you are getting. So here, the first data, just clearly see what this one, this is the first thing which I am going to take. So while studying the displacement, we had clearly studied about two types of displacement that is uniform motion and non-uniform motion, right? Okay, so uniform motion means what? Once the the anything or any object is displacing equally in equal interval of time then we can say that particular motion is not known as what that motion is known as uniform motion whereas once if any object is displacing unequally in equal interval of time then however small the intervals be then we call it as what non-uniform motion for those who won't see the video i'll just pin somewhere here and you can just see that video too okay so let us see what is given there. Let uh, just check the first box clearly. Then we can see that in the first interval of two seconds, don't think that all the intervals will be two seconds or two minutes or for convenience only, I'm taking it as two. It can be three, it can be four, it can be 0.5, it can be two micrometers, but it can be anything. But for our convenience, we are taking this two as our interval. So you can see here the first two seconds next 4 seconds, next 6 seconds, next 8 seconds, next 10 seconds. That means interval between them is what? 2 is the interval, right? But it can be 2 seconds. For example, I am just taking 2 seconds, okay? It can be 2 minutes, 2 hours, anything, okay? So 2 seconds. And here you can see in the first 2 seconds, the body has displaced 2. Next 2 seconds, that is 2 plus 2, 4. Then the body has displaced 4 meters. Then the next 2 seconds, that is 6, six seconds. The body has displaced 6 meters. Next 8, it is 8 meters. 10 is 10 meters. That means the object is displacing equal displacement. That is 2 to 4, it is having a difference of 2 meters. 4 to 6, it is having a displacement of 4, 2 meters. And 6 to 8, it is again having 2 meters dis difference. And 8 to 10, again, it is having 2 meters difference there. That is 2 meter displacement is done in each two seconds that is the body is executing what type of motion the body is having uniform motion and we can see what type of graph we will get while doing the uniform motion okay let us plot the graph here you can see the first two seconds the first two seconds the body is having at this point two meters again let this be second and let this be meters okay Okay, the next two seconds, that is 2 plus 2, that is 4 seconds, you can see the body is displacing 4 meters. Okay, fine. Next 2 seconds, that is 6 seconds, the body is displacing 6. Next, it is 8, you can see the body is displacing 8, right? And then it is a 10, you can see the object is displacing 10 meters. So you are getting certain points like this 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And if you are just joining, you can see that okay, 
is having a straight line. So here you are getting the first inference for uniform motion. You are getting a straight line. Straight line graph is obtained there. Okay. So whenever you are seeing a straight line, an inclined line with respect to the time, uh, then you can say the object is executing what type of motion? Uniform. So let us see what happens once it is a non-uniform motion. So, okay, just check the second data given in your hands and see what type of motion is there. Okay, in the first two seconds, though I am just taking the interval as equal because as per definition, it is said that non-uniform motion is the motion in which the body executes unequal displacement in equal interval of time. The other way around is also correct. But to make it more clear and standard, we are just taking we are the interval to be same but the displacement is different okay so the first two seconds the body is executing two okay the next two seconds that is two plus two four second the body is executing three the body has a displacement three meters clearly see and the next two seconds that is four plus two six the body is executing seven meters from the origin and the next two seconds that is eight second the body is executing ten the next ten then the body is executing 11. That means if I am just taking the difference between the displacement that is 2 to 3 there is a difference of 1 meter and 3 to 7 the body has displaced 4 meters. Okay and next you can see 7 to 10 that is the body is having a difference of 3 meters and then 10 to 11 body is executing what how much 1 meter difference there. That means in equal interval of time because 2 to 4, 2 seconds, 4 to 6, 2 seconds, 6 to 8, 2 seconds and 8 to 10, 2 seconds. That is interval, time interval is 2 seconds and the body is having a displacement, unequal displacement of 1 meter, 4 meter, 3 meter and 1 meter. That is when. Now we are going to plot the graph. That means if I am just plotting a graph here, are you getting a straight line? No, you are not getting a straight line. Instead, you are getting a curved line. So, once you are seeing a curved line or not a straight line, then that particular motion is what? Is a non-uniform motion. So, I hope that you got the meaning and physics behind what is a straight line graph and a non-straight line or curved line or curved graph. Okay. It's not curved line. Okay. There is no word like curved line. It's a curved graph. My mistake. Okay. So, that is a inference that you are getting the first and foremost very important inference that you are getting out of a displacement time graph to identify whether it is a uniform motion or a non-uniform motion. So straight line doesn't mean that it is a horizontal line because horizontal line in a displacement time graph means what? Horizontal line. Just imagine that there is a graph and you are getting a horizontal line. A horizontal line in a displacement time graph means the body is at rest. Just imagine that the first zero second, the body, the object is at zero position. Now at two seconds, you can see the body is at this particular position only. For example, if this is uh, two, four, six, six meters, that is six meters from the origin. Okay. So, Again, the next four seconds, the body is again at six meters from the origin. Next six seconds, the body is at six meters from the origin. Eight seconds, the body is at six meters from the origin. That means the body is not moving a bit from six meters from the origin. Okay, so that means what? The body is at rest. And what is the position of the body? Position of the object is six meters from the origin. And this states that what the object is at rest okay so straight line graph or st this straight line means an inclined graph and curved line means an incline or there is a curve there there is a curve there a non line or non straight line graph and this is about the displacement time graph and we will get one more very important inference from displacement time graph for that again for our convenience i am taking what i am taking the uniform motion bodies or objects graph and origin at the origin let the object be at this particular position that is x1 okay now listen to the graph 
So here, what is the, what are the inference that you're getting out of this displacement time graph? Just imagine that this is a time axis, okay, and this is the displacement axis. Y is taken as displacement, X is taken as time. So here, as per the, okay, I'll just take this be X1 and this will be X2, okay, okay. As per the graph, you can see that at the origin, at the origin, the body is having a displacement of X1. Imagine, okay, this is a graph, this is a man. This man is at X1 with respect to the origin. So this is the meaning of this particular graph. That is, with respect to the origin, with respect to the origin, the man is having a displacement here. The man is having a displacement of X1. Okay. And then the man starts to move, the man starts to move and reaches to a point, which point? X2. That is X2 in time, in time T1. What is the time here? That is T1. He took T1 time. That is T1 time. And the man is having a uniform motion, a uniform motion. So you are getting a straight inclined, straight line inclined. We need to find out the slope of the graph. So slope of the graph means if this is theta with respect to this, the angle with respect to this horizontal line or time graph or timeline, then if I am calculating the tan theta, then that means the slope. Let's imagine this is a different namings of the points. Okay. Then opposite by adjacent, right? Opposite means BC by adjacent. Adjacent means this line, this line. So the slope there, I'm just writing somewhere here. Then you can see that slope is equal to x2 minus x1 or x2 the total x2 minus this portion means what this portion this is what displacement so what displacement so slope is equal to displacement by t t means what time time displacement by time what is displacement by time displacement by time is nothing but the velocity. So if you are calculating the slope of a graph for a displacement time graph, then what will you get? We will get another thing that is the velocity. So if I want to find out the velocity of the graph, you should do nothing. Just find out the slope and you will get the velocity. So two inference you are getting out of this displacement time graph. First one is that to identify whether the object is having uniform or non-uniform motion. The next thing is that if you are finding out the slope, then you will get what? The velocity of the graph. So just go through the video, understand the concept and then see whether you are getting it or not. Okay. Now we will just study about very important thing that is the next type of graph that is a velocity time graph. Okay. Here comes the next type of graph that is a velocity time graph. So in previously we have seen uh, the displacement time graph where we have plotted the graph between displacement and time. So as the name suggests velocity time graph means if you are plotting a graph with respect to velocity and time then the graph obtained it can be like this or it can be like this obtained is known as what? A velocity time graph. So here also we will study about what are the what are the different uh, results or what are the informations that we are getting out of this velocity time graph. Okay, so just see that velocity time graph is plotted by using the data given there. For example, if you are provided with certain data, okay, let this be time interval and this be the velocity. There it was. The displacement here it is a velocity there so just imagine that the object is uh, moving <coughs> in time interval two seconds four seconds six seconds and eight seconds and ten seconds so just see for example i'm taking the first two seconds the object is having a velocity of two meter per second second the fourth second it is having four meter per second Next, it is 6 is 6 meter per second, 8 is 8 meter per second, and 10 is 10 meter per second. And also, I am taking another data that is the object is having uniform velocity there. Uniform velocity means what? That is, the object is or the body is executing or having 
uniform velocity it's only a single velocity that means if i am just riding a bike at 40 meter per second then throughout my journey i am just using my uh, i'm using the speed of 40 meter per second for example that is v is equal to 40 40 40 40 and it is uh, the first five minutes and the next 10 minutes and next 15 minutes and next 20 minutes okay so this is only an example okay so here what happened in this scenario, that is the second scenario, you can say that it is having a uniform velocity. Why? Because the object is not changing its velocity with respect to time, with respect to time. But in the second, in the first case, in here, you can see that the object is changing its velocity with respect to the time interval. It is changing with respect to time interval. That means the rate of change in velocity happens there and the rate of change of velocity is known as what acceleration so here comes the next inference next attribute in <clears throat> this particular chapter that is very important very 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 important that is acceleration so acceleration means the rate of change in velocity whenever the rate is coming then it is division or divided by time interval or change in velocity if the object is executing uh, an initial velocity u that is initial velocity u and final velocity v then v minus u v minus u what is that change in velocity divided by time and that is given that, or that will give you what that will give you another very important term that is acceleration just imagine that <coughs> You have a bike here and you are riding a bike here. Okay. Now, in the first second, you are just having an accelerator here. <clears throat> the accelerator moves like this from 0 meter per second to 20 meter per second to 40 meter per second like that. Okay. Now, you can see that in the first two seconds, it happens in 5 seconds. Okay. Here also it happens in 5 seconds. Then I can say that my bike riding is in such a fashion that in each 5 seconds I am just using or increasing my velocity to 20 meters, meter per second or 20 meter per second is my velocity. The next 5 seconds my acceleration or change in my velocity is 20 to 40. That means what is the difference there? It is 20. That right? Here also it's, there is a difference of 20 meter per second. Here also it is a difference of 20 meter per second means my acceleration is uniform there that is with respect to in 5 seconds that is my rate of change in velocity is what in this particular interval that is 20 by 5 right that is rate means time here also what is my rate of change in velocity that is final velocity 40 minus initial velocity 20 divided by time interval 5 20 by in this case also, my final velocity is 20, my initial velocity is 0, and my time interval is 5. That means 20 by 5. That means you are getting an equal acceleration. So what is this, this term? This term is what? A rate of change in velocity. That is acceleration. My acceleration is constant there. So we call this type of motion as what? Uniformly accelerated motion. In physical world, there is a chance of least chance to get this uniformly accelerated motion. Why? Because if you are, if I am riding a bike from my hometown to somewhere else, then definitely I will just travel in different, different velocities. My rate of change in velocity will vary accordingly. So that means a variation of acceleration happens there. And you can see that that will not be a uniform motion instead, uniformly accelerated motion instead that will be uh, non-uniform accelerated motion. Now you itself say in this first case what type of motion is this? The first case the motion is known as uniformly accelerated motion. Why? Because just closely observe. Here you can see in the first two seconds that is two to four time interval that is two seconds my change in velocity is what? Four minus two that is 2 meter per second right in the next time interval 4 to 6 means 2 seconds what is my 
change in velocity that is 6 minus 4 that is 2 meter per second. In my next time interval 6 to 8, 2 seconds you can see 6 to, 6, 6 to 8 is my change in velocity. So 8 minus 6 that is 2 meter per second. That means here you can say the acceleration is 2 by 2 that is 1 meter per second square. Why? Because what is a unit? SI unit of acceleration? It is acceleration means rate of change in velocity. So if I want to calculate the, uh, the, the unit, SI unit, then change in velocity. So that means what? What is SI unit of velo change in velocity? It is the SI unit of velocity itself. That is meter per second. And then time, it is second. This is SI unit. So here, meter per second divided by second, then you will get meter per second square. So this is a it's a unit of acceleration. In the second case, you can see that my first, this is time, okay, my first time interval that is 5 to 10, that means what? 5 seconds, this is my time interval, okay. In the second time interval also be 50 minus 10, that is 5 seconds. Here, 50 minus 15 to 20, that is 20 minus 15, that is 5 seconds. So, here in the second case, the time interval is 5, 40 to 40, 40 to 40 means what? 40 to 40, 40 to 40 means my final velocity is 40, initial velocity is 40, so it will be 0. Here, 40 to 40, again, final velocity is 40, initial velocity is 40, so change in velocity is 0. And my next one, third term, 40 minus 40, right? Again, there is no change. What does that mean? It means that my initial and final velocities are equal. That means there is no acceleration. No acceleration means what? It is a uniform motion. Uniform motion. In uniform motion, there is no acceleration. So here, acceleration will be what? Acceleration is equal to 0. Acceleration is 0. I hope that you are getting my points. Okay, why? Because why it is 0? Because here, if I am calculating the rate of change in velocity, then what, I, what is the rate of change in velocity? Rate of change is 0 divided by time equal to 0. So throughout you are getting a zero value. Acceleration itself means that you need a change in velocity. Here is there any change in velocity? There is no change in velocity. So that will be zero. Okay, I will take another example, another data and then we will see about non-uniform acceleration. Okay, let us see. Let this be another example. That is the velocity of the object is given at different, different time intervals. So here let us see the time intervals. That is 2 to 4. That is what is the difference there? What is the time interval between that time? That is from 4 minus 2, that is 2. Here 4 to 6, that is 2 seconds is a time interval. And 6 to 8 means 2 seconds is a time interval. I am taking seconds there. Okay. And here velocity. <clears throat> In the first time interval, it has changed its velocity to 2 to 6, that is 6 minus 2, that is 4. Next time interval, it has changed 6 to 9, that means 9 minus 6, that is 3 meter per second. Let this be meter per second. And here 9 to 14, the next time interval, it has accelerated too much, that is 40 minus 9, 40 minus 9, that will be 5 meter per second. So here closely observe what is the acceleration. Here in this case, the acceleration is equal to in the first time interval, rate of change in velocity that is 4, 2 meter per second square happens here, right? Now, in the second, here this is the first acceleration. Second acceleration you can get 3 by 2 there. And the third acceleration in 5 by here over you can see that the acceleration keeps on varying at different, different intervals. That means once the acceleration is different at different intervals, then we call such type of motion as what? Non-uniform accelerated motion. So these all are the prerequisites. Now coming back to the velocity time graph. Take the first scenario. There you can get that in the first two seconds, the object is having a velocity of 2 meter per second. So this is one. If I plot the graph, you can see that you are obtaining a straight line. So whenever you are getting a graph and that too a straight inclined graph while plotting the velocity time, then you will say that this is what type of motion? This is a uniformly accelerated motion. Or coming back to the second idea. In the second graph, actually this graph is not complete. Just imagine that at zero also, this is at 40 then the graph is a straight line and that line is parallel to what axis this time axis a straight line parallel to the time axis then your acceleration will be what your acceleration will be zero the third case what happens there let us see 
here i had taken my time axis in such a way that there is a difference in 2 seconds okay now my velocity axis i had taken a difference of 4 meter per second right so that is 0 to 4 0 4 to 8 4 to 8 to 12 and 12 to 14 that means you are not getting a straight line instead a curve is formed here a curve is formed there it moves like this a curve is formed there and whenever you are saying a graph which is not straight line either it is not straight inclined line or if it is not straight horizontal line and instead you are getting a curved line that that means what that means you are getting a non uniformly accelerated motion now we will study some more inference some more informations you will get out of this graph let us see what are the other information okay here i had taken a velocity time graph and here i'm saying that i am just analyzing the velocity time graph of a uniformly motion object a uniform motion object uniform motion object means what the velocity is constant there whenever there is a constant velocity is there any acceleration no just uh, think about or recall about the second example that we had taken in the last session okay so here the velocity is not constant so definitely sorry the velocity is constant so definitely there will be no acceleration so you will get a straight line here you will get a straight line parallel to the horizon. just imagine that the this is the origin and let this be t1 so at t1 you will get a velocity this let this be v okay at t2 also you will get the same velocity v okay so if i am just calculating if i am just taking this particular area that portion where i am shading okay this particular area what will happen there what is the actual meaning of that so if i am finding out the area there so what is the area calculated there area of the shaded portion area will be equal to length into breadth that is ba into ad what is ba what is ba ba you can see this ba is nothing but the velocity so that is equal to the velocity into what is ad 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 means it is T2 minus T1, T2 minus T1. So here you will get a very uh, what interesting feature there. So what happens there? Velocity into time. Velocity into time means what? Simply velocity into time is nothing but it is a displacement. So in a velocity time graph, if you are finding out the area of the under the graph, or area subtended by the graph then you will get what you will get a very interesting value that is nothing but the displacement what is the next important thing that you are getting out of this particular graph so now what is the next inference in velocity time graph or what is the next information that you will get out of this velocity time graph okay like in previous session previous graph we had seen to find out the slope right so here what happens if you are finding out a slope okay just imagine that you are having a uniformly accelerated motion okay so definitely then you will get what you will get a straight line you will get a straight inclined line like this now what happens if you're finding out the slope and you all know that slope means what it is tan theta okay just imagine that this is the theta angle or theta is the angle subtended by the graph with respect to this particular time axis time axis so now what is tan theta here? Tan theta will be equal to opposite by adjacent, opposite by adjacent. So that is BC by AC, BC by AC. Then here, what is BC? BC is equal to BD minus CD, right? Simple mathematics. So this is BD. If you are just cancelling out this portion, then you will get this portion, right? And this is nothing but BC, right? So divided by AC, AC is nothing where it's at time. Okay, what is BD and CD here? So BD and CD is equal to, what is BD? The total, we say, okay, let us see at time T1, let this be V final, right? V final, V final minus, what is CD? Initial velocity or initial UI divided by time. So delta V by T. Or what is this thing? Okay, slope. So if you are just calculating the slope, then you will get a difference in 
velocity divided by time or simply i can say it is a rate of change in velocity uh, whenever you are seeing rate then it is divided by time change in velocity that means v minus u and that is nothing but the acceleration so from this particular graph you are getting that if you are finding out the slope then you will get what you will get the acceleration so for a velocity time graph the slope will give you the acceleration the area will give you what the displacement and from the graph itself by seeing the uh, whether it is a straight line or a curve then you will find out you can find out whether this particular motion is uniformly accelerated or non-uniformly accelerated. So that's it. So I hope that you got the points related to the graphs, what are the different types of graphs and what are the informations that you are getting out of the graphs, right? Okay. So we'll see in the next class with new, new topics, very important topics for class 11 NCRT. So we need your support in terms of your like, share, comment and subscription. So do supporting and we'll see in the next class. Till then, goodbye.